Hello, my name is John Gerard, and today I'd like to share with you some tips and techniques that I've learned from using teleprompters in my online classes for more than 15 years. A lot has changed in the technology available for creating teleprompters, but one thing that has not changed is teleprompters are just tools. They certainly aren't some panacea, but they are also not the enemy. I know that many people think teleprompters are too constraining or perhaps too complicated, but the reality is that used correctly, they can enhance your online teaching. You won't be surprised to know that I've been using a teleprompter to deliver this talk. For the next segment, I want to show you the technology in action. I will show you three different setups that I use. We'll start with the most sophisticated setup and work towards the simplest. By the end of the video, you will have enough knowledge to choose which setup is best for you. Okay, let's start with the studio example. Here, you can see my teleprompter, exactly as I see it. As I read the text, it scrolls up. I'll explain more about that magic in a minute. Here, you can see a wide shot of the room in which I'm doing this recording. You can probably tell this isn't a dedicated studio, but rather it's the spare bedroom in our home. I'm using a homemade teleprompter, the main components of which are a tablet. I'm using an iPad mini, but any small tablet will do. The glass from a picture frame and a digital camera. I'm using a Canon, but virtually any digital camera will work. Let's take a look at how all this comes together. In this diagram, you can see the video camera on a tripod, like what I have. We add a tray for the tablet and the glass from the picture frame. By angling the glass at 45 degrees, the text on the tablet reflects off the glass and is visible to me, but the text is not captured by the camera. So I can read the text, but it's not seen in the video. Because the glass is directly in front of the camera, I can look straight into the lens. This is the basic setup for most teleprompters. The setup allows me to see the text, or even slides, but more on that later, on the glass but at the same time, the camera was recording through the glass. The benefit is that you can maintain eye contact with your students or audience. To improve visibility, the teleprompter is shrouded by black material to avoid other light reflecting on the screen, which makes it much, much easier to read. Now I'm using an app that has voice control and so it scrolls the text as I read. If I speak fast, the text scrolls fast. If I speak slow, the text scrolls slow. This is a huge change in technology from only a few years ago when you had to set the text speed. Almost certainly I would get ahead of or behind the scrolling text. The voice control also pauses if you decide to ad lib for a while. I can go off script, I can talk about whatever I want, I can tell you that it's a nice day here. Now I'm back on script. The scroll pause feature is vital as I often go off script. In this example, you can see I'm using studio lighting and a background screen for chroma keying. I like this setup as I can add a background, like the one you're seeing now, when I edit the video. I can easily change the background during the editing phase. I'm also using a lavalier lapel microphone right here. Although the light screen and microphone are not necessary, I find they significantly increase the video quality. I'll talk more about all of these in future videos. Let's take a look at a second teleprompter a setup that I use. The main components are the same, a digital camera, a picture frame glass, and a tablet. However, this time I have the setup in my office, as you can see here. 
Uh, there's no studio lights and no background screen. I'm still using a lavalier mic, although as I mentioned before, it's not essential. I'm using the same tablet and the same app. It's also the same camera, but I did build a smaller tray system, which I'll showcase in future videos. Basically, this is a simplified version of the studio setup that obviously doesn't require a dedicated room, fancy lights, or a background screen. Even though the setup is less complicated, I find the videos are very good. I have this setup in the corner of my desk and it just stays there. Uh, for many applications, this is perfectly fine. I tend to use the studio setup when I'm creating content that will be reused many times, and I use this desktop version for weekly course updates and feedback videos. The third setup I use is definitely the simplest. No digital camera, no reflecting glass, no microphone, just the tablet by itself. I'm using the same tablet as I used in other examples and the same app. As you can see, the text scrolls on the left side of the tablet near the camera, and you can see yourself on the right side. It really couldn't be easier. The quality is obviously not as good as other examples. Depending on the type of case you have for your tablet, you might find it tricky to get the angle right. I also find I have to be more careful with the light and the background, but all of that said, it's perfectly fine. I tend to use this system when I'm traveling and I've never had any negative comments. I think most students appreciate the effort and might not be that worried about the quality. Uh, so there you have it, three different teleprompter setups. I recommend that you start small. Experiment with the tablet alone setup. Obviously the quality is not quite the same as the desktop or studio versions, but it's still pretty good. In the comments, I'll include some more information about the equipment and the apps that I use. Uh, there are many options, so please take a look at the App Store and see what will work best for you. Now, if you found this video helpful, please like it and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel so you can watch other videos in the series. Thanks so much for watching.